not a massive surprise to CIOs that might be listening, but 67% of people said they strongly agreed that cyber was their number one focus area. Some people are lucky enough to have CISOs, head of security, but ultimately the boardroom is looking, unless that CISO is definitely on the board, they're looking at the CIO. So that means we are the people responsible for it. Hello and welcome to the Acora podcast. I'm Nick Moore and I'm your host for this edition. We're going to be talking about the latest edition of the Acora CIO report. As in previous years, we've conducted our own detailed survey of IT leaders, all of them in UK-based mid-market companies um, across a wide range of sectors with an average of just over 6,500 users. Um, we've asked them a, a series of questions on a range of topics, which we'll explore in more detail during this episode. This is the fourth CIO report we've produced. And once again, it's thrown up all kinds of insights, talking points, concerns, and a few surprises. Um, And to break it all down, make sense of it, and give us his thoughts on what we found, I'm delighted to welcome Acora's own CIO, Mr. Lee Ganley. Hello, Nick. Thanks for the introduction. Great to have you here on the podcast. Um, So yeah, Acora's CIO, fast moving, growing organisation that Acora is. I'd like to think now that I'm pretty well positioned as I've got all of the organic and inorganic growth challenges that quite a lot of our clients are going to have. So I've spent a lot of time with with you and the Foundry team actually pouring over this report. It's something that's near and dear to me. I don't just use it as something that we can share with our clients, but I do actually use it for our own purposes and defining our own strategy, actually, just to see whether I should be spending my time doing the things it recommends or whether it's a validation of the things that that I'm already doing, which is probably the most important thing. Great stuff. Okay, so let's let's get into it then. For those people who aren't necessarily familiar with it, what did we ask our, our respondents to, to tell us about this year? And were there any changes from previous years? And, and if so, what? why did we change the questions we were asking? We worked with the Foundry IDG team. We accessed their data, we used their platform, and they help us craft the questions. And we've got to combine those with year-on-year trends which are important because that then gives, especially around budgets, people want to know, I certainly want to know whether I've got as much as my near neighbour and I want to know where he's spending his time. But then also we've got to look at the contemporary things that are challenges that over that year, the past 12 months, that we're getting hit with. So there is going to be some stuff that's trending and then some stuff that's definitely some new areas or they're building on an area of focus from the last year. So five key areas this year experience which is something that we started last year we were real champs on experience it really important for me was the role of the cio and that was new because we did think that that was definitely something that has changed it budget that's a hardy perennial that's going to be there year on year it's one of those things that people genuinely want to know especially this year with a lot of the macroeconomic climate things happening so what is that actually doing to people's budget cyber is something that we combined last year with security and productivity so that's something that we've actually just we've reduced and dropped out the productivity part of it and we're really focusing in on cyber spoiler alert is kind of the number one focus area for us cios at the moment so that constant existential threat is really out there and then data and visualization so that's the five key areas uh and last year was agile hybrid we combined that security and productivity and IT budget. Other than that, the areas are pretty new and fresh this year. Excellent stuff. Okay, so given that Acora was was founded on championing user experience, a very meaningful measure of IT performance, in terms of this year's uh, report, did we get a sense that that message is getting through more widely? We had a really good response rate right, this year. So 95% of people telling us they're measuring experience. All sorts of different types of measurement, by the way. But that does mean that people are definitely valuing that benchmark and then really starting to think about how they use the data that that's telling them to improve that experience. We didn't get into the specific tools they were using. The techniques definitely covered those. So we don't know how intrusive that it was to the end users that they were asking those questions and what the coverage was and all those sorts of things. But what we do know is they are measuring across a couple of different areas. So, I mean, obviously this is good news. The, you know, the, the message is getting out there. Did you get a sense from from the the survey what they're using this experience data for and 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 has that has that evolved over the time we've been measuring this it's not really evolved actually but you can start to see some of those macroeconomic plays coming in so first of all it is great news that people are measuring it in such such high numbers the number one thing exactly the same as last year was about improving uh, productivity so that's all about getting more out of less and that's been a cfo priority over the last 12 months and with the macroeconomic 
things that are happening, you know, a pound today is worth less than a pound was in 2022, certainly less than a pound was in 2021. So it's definitely one of those areas that improving productivity. So if you can have that experience, even losing an hour a month, imagine that across a, an organization of 5,000 people, that's an awful lot. And without good telemetry about trying to measure of experience, you can really start to you know have a big impact. So that was number one, productivity. Um, number two is around increasing revenue. And so that's up. That's up 12%. So we're at 69% of respondents. So yeah, that was still there. But it's definitely something that's more important. And and third, and, and definitely by no means least, was about staff retention. Yeah, because I know that was something that came up last year, wasn't it? We were, we were talking very much about the importance of the experience in recruiting and, and retaining people and, and people increasingly saying, well, if you can't offer me a great experience, I'll go somewhere where, where, where they can. Yeah, I think there's inertia happening in the market anyway. I think cash coming into the market, remote working's definitely helped with some of that. So this is good news. And and I, I guess, as you were saying earlier, in terms of how this informs not just what our customers are doing, but what Acora is doing, this is this mm. is an example of how feedback from the market is informing what your strategy and providing feedback on what you're doing and saying, actually, this is working. This is good. This is what people want and need. Absolutely. And, you know, we're starting to benchmark experience and combining that with security services so you know we're actually starting to see some trends in the feedback now multi-factor authentication is definitely something that hey if we use amazon we use our banking you know it's all around mfa or biometrics but there's a lot of things that have got that now people are starting to see that in the enterprise and we're starting to get experience complaints about the extra levels of security so really trying to get that feedback use that as a nice balanced approach to then how are we going to improve security but also you know preserve and maintain that experience so i think we've got better access to data we're thinking about how we consolidate it operations and security operations put those things together and i think that gives us some quite compelling data to then start to benchmark against you are the best man to talk about this um for the first time this year we, we've specifically asked our, our respondents most of whom are CIOs themselves about the role itself. What what does being a CIO mean, and how has that role changed? And what came back from that reflect your experience and the conversations you've been having? It definitely did. You know, we did ask our survey respondents whether their role had been elevated, either because of, during, or post the pandemic. We think that gave people an opportunity, certainly in my seat, in the CIO seat, to fundamentally influence a business. Overnight, reimagining business processes, you know, they kind of leapt from a remote working policy. Converting that into a sustainable strategy was really good. I mean, they did need to go into all sorts of different areas of the business and collaborate in what was a pretty tight time scale. You know, definitely some strategic thinking in there. And I genuinely think that was a bit of a reminder of how effective CIOs can be inside organizations. Where you need to share a vision, I think that's something that. Very few people are incentivized, clearly executive board, but operations are going to focus on operations. The sales guys are going to focus on sales because that's what they're being measured on. But an overall vision, clearly chief executive, but then IT does touch every part of that. So it is one of those really horizontal functions. And a really good CIO can bring that shared vision together, but needs to give quick reality check. This is where we are. This is what the art of the possible is. This is the impact of what we're going to do. So I think that gave us a pretty good reboot professionally inside those operations and that's what we're hearing and then i am hearing about additional things that are people are being asked to do now so their purview is extended and there's all sorts of different things that might be helping facilities a little bit more because they've got this new reimagined digital office so they're actually you know do i have a hot desk space do i need to have walk-up facilities because people are in the office rather than hey i've got I've got a help desk. So all of that meant that they effectively got this this raising profile. Cyber was something that came through as well. Not a massive surprise to CIOs that might be listening, but 67% of people said they strongly agreed that cyber was their number one focus area. Some people are lucky enough to have CISOs, head of security, but ultimately the boardroom is looking, unless that CISO is definitely on the board, they're looking at the CIO. So that means we are the people responsible for it. So we're having to become cyber experts. And I didn't expect to be this far 
uh, into it in my own career, actually. You, you just said that, um, you know, top priority for CIOs this year has, has been cyber, and which is why we made it a specific focus within the, the report. What was it you wanted to learn, particularly because cyber is a huge area? What, what was your, your real focus on? And I think that's exactly it. It's such a big area. Where are people spending their time? Where are they investing? Where are they spending their marketing dollars? And actually, we started to see threat intelligence was key because actually you can have a lot of latent threat, but live threats are the things that you really need to protect yourself against. Okay. What you would think of as conventional cyber challenges, you know, hacking attacks and ransomwares and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. But there's definitely certain uh, attackers, certain bad actors are definitely going to be industry focused. They're going to be company size focused. You know, it's an industry in its own right. So I do think an awareness of that, an awareness of whether you are more susceptible because of who you are and and the markets that you operate in as an organization and then how to adequately protect yourself. We did have a very excited Simon Crumplin at the Acora X event, <laughs> uh, director of cyber at, uh, at Acora, but he was massively supported by the survey data, very much around drills. It's about the effectiveness of being ready but there are so many different active things that you can be working on. Sure. Probably the best thing you can do is be ready with your drills. Uh, okay. You know, when do you know what type of attack you're going to get? And then we get a red team attack, a simulated attack, okay. so that you're then simulating a response. And then you're using that to improve it. Now, passive, you know, active scans on things, not passive scans, but active scans on things can give you some intelligence. But actually being attacked, there's nothing quite like it. You don't want to wait for when... A genuine <laughs> no, by then it's kind of too late it? <laughs> exactly so that was interesting and then actually we were interested because we'd acquired a very you know credible cyber capability and we were clearly a, an msp of some maturity actually those things together for us made beautiful and perfect sense actually having integrated or united it and cyber ops reducing the time to resolve you know having very clear lines of responsibility rather than just having a security service and then they just spray and go over a whole load of intel and data. Well, if you're responsible for delivering that infrastructure as well as protecting it, that should be reducing the time it takes to detect it and then remediate it because you're not just detecting it and throwing it over to a different team, maybe outside of the organization, they're inside that all. So we're interested in that as a product. So finding out where our clients were on that journey was really interesting as well. Fantastic. Are there particular things that CIOs worry about and if they're not, probably should be? Yeah. So I think due diligence is something that as people are adopting standards, be that ISO 27001, be that Cyber Essentials, Cyber Essentials Plus, they're starting with the newer versions of certainly 27001 and Cyber mm-hmm. Essentials. They're starting to get into the supply chain, extending your security boundary and your compliance boundary to include those third parties. So Acora as a supplier has a lot of uh, obligation into our clients to do due diligence. But when we're talking to them, quite often it's they're being asked those questions as well. So that really that pressure of due diligence and supply chain due diligence. And that can be anything from 300 questions in a portal broadly aligning to GDPR, it'll add to 27,001. So the time it takes to actually produce the evidence to support those diligent activities, that's really costly. So driving that cost down, that's something that you do with good governance, good practices. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's one of the things that certainly came through, that good governance using data, you know, yeah. what things that we're using data and telemetry for, or compliance and regulatory compliance is something where we're harvesting data and then using it. But we're going to get hit with more and more of those due diligence questionnaires. So it's incumbent on us to be ready for them. Sure. And then lower the cost of delivering them. And that leads us actually on to this question of we've got tons of data. How do we get anything useful out of it? And I know that when we talked about this last year, that was one of the key findings was was that people had tons of data, but were really struggling to get anything meaningful or, or actionable out of it. Do you get a sense from this year's report whether that situation's improved or even changed, or is it still something that people are grappling with? We know from Microsoft research uh, and our own that people are moving to the cloud. The, the number one workload they're moving in is data and analytics, because right. it's in there. You can do some pretty clever things with it. So people are starting to definitely think about that strategy of moving it. 
I absolutely think they're getting ready to do AI over the top of it, or they should be, but it needs to be in the right location. And the really big thing is it needs to be nice and clean. And people are still having problems with the aggregation of it, problems with filtering it. And that's one of the things where people are starting to use modern contemporary platforms to be able to go and do that. I know that one of the things that we got from the from the data was that lots of people had tools, but were still having this difficulty of using them properly. Do you think it's a case of people haven't got the right tools, they've got the right ones, but they're not using them in the right way, or they're just not clear about what they're trying to do? Or is it something of all of that i think it's a little bit of each it depends that people are on different parts of their journey but people that have got the tools and have started to get value out of them very much need to maybe take a step up and then see enterprise wide so that's about the cio's role in shared vision how do you bring all of the people around to be able to get the most value out of the data individual departments might get great value out of the data but is there an abstraction above that and i think that's where the cio's role is that almost doing it as more of an agile style project. So you're doing a continual development. Mm -hmm. You're then taking a step up and looking at it from an organization-wide perspective rather than a lot of these projects used to be done by parts of the business and they're now being done at something that's on a more industrialized scale, right? which is absolutely great. We're augmenting it with data from more than just a few areas in the business. So we're bringing that together. So I do think that people are on that journey. CIOs have got a role to be able to mm -hmm provide that vision and then tell people very practically where they are and then give them a means of being able to get access to it nice and quickly. Something like an agile, short, sharp blasts, continuous improvement, you know, measure the value of the data. I think that will also then unlock people's time and effort and investment in it. And do you think that, because the other hot topic out there that we didn't, to be fair, really address specifically in the report is, is AI. Does AI have a role in that, in this kind of aggregation and, and, and sharing of stuff and bringing things together? Because obviously it's, an, it's a huge task for people to do. Is that something that AI is going to play more of a part in as, as go, go forward? Absolutely, because people are going to be able to put those large language models uh, and generative AI, you know, more, more traditional AI, they're going to be able to put that over the data but it's only as good as the data. Of course, garbage in, garbage out, as has as always been the case. <laughs> Absolutely, and that is definitely a reference on page. Uh, <laughs> so no, we've got it, yep, on page 26, we've got garbage in and garbage out. So yeah, exactly right. It's definitely one of those things, but you have got to get ready. AI is something that we'll definitely focus in on next year um, an awful lot more. I mean, generative AI is really in the press and that's, mm -hmm. been, that's brought it into mainstream focus. Um, it's only been out since what November twenty two, so Chat GPT. That's one of the that's the word in everybody's mouth, and people are using it. You know, it's raw, but you can see the power of it. I think we're people have talked about the fourth industrial revolution for a while. I think we're in it. We're going to need to know as CIOs how to get the best out of it. And presumably as well, this stuff is not going to come free of charge, which leads us on to what are CIOs spending their money on? And is AI going to be one of them? Or is that a question for next year? Yeah, I think I genuinely, I think that is a question for next year. I mean, the big thing to say about how much people, uh, money people have got is people haven't got or not as many people saying their budgets were going up. But the ones that were, were actually people that were able to spend more. So that right. kind of got up from the 20s into the 30s. Now, yeah. there was less of them saying, hey, I'm, I'm feeling richer this year. I've got more money to spend. Mm. Um, but of the ones that were, they were showing off a little bit. And they said, yeah, <laughs> I've got a little bit more cash to spend. So we didn't really delve into where they were going to spend it. It was, more okay. a, it was more a, yeah, how much have you got to spend rather than focusing in on those areas. Okay. But a general feeling out there, and I guess this is common across every industry, not, not just the IT sector, mm. a lot of people feeling they've got to do the same with less in the year ahead. And that definitely came through. Yeah. It does came through. But 94% of respondents um, said that they were going to grow their operation. So oh, it's really difficult to grow your operation if your budget <laughs> is shrinking. So that does genuinely mean, yeah, it genuinely means you're going to have to do more with less. Yeah, yeah. So what are you looking to do? The big messages from the Acora X day around security were try and take the tools that you've got and really get good value out of them. Make sure that you've got them deployed correctly. You've probably got quite a lot of the tools you already need. Are you maximizing the investments that you've got across platforms that are 
a great integrated tool set? Do you need the individual tools or can you actually get rid of those and focus down on a, on a more consolidated tool set and save yourself some money? So that spend a little bit to save long term on operating costs. That's definitely happening, a bit of spend to save as well. And I guess for most CIOs and businesses, one of the big investment decisions is going to be, OK, do we do this ourselves or do we outsource it? And in terms of choosing a provider, I know that, you know, you and I were very struck by a finding that said 40 percent of the companies we talked to believe that their current provider wouldn't be able to support their growth strategy, which seems an extraordinarily high figure. Um, what, what do you think lies behind that? I definitely think it's something to do with size. So uh, right. organizations that grow and that are ambitious. Um, and we've done it via acquisition, actually. So we've, we've acquired and one of the larger clients inside the acquired company mm. were kind of feeling a little bit exposed by the fact that they were outgrowing their MSP. Now, we've happened to acquire a smaller MSP, integrate them to a core. And then that was kind of a bit of a sigh of relief to some of those clients because actually... If they'd have started to do due diligence on the size of that organization based on where they were right now and their anticipated mm. growth, that was definitely an area. So I think outgrowing the products that you're consuming from that MSP is definitely, definitely a thing. I do think there's also mergers, acquisitions, diversion, a bit mm. like death, divorce, debt, that type of thing. You know, it's one of those things that is always going to create inertia. There's going to be a change event that happens that you re evaluate you take stock it might actually be just a change in leadership that would allow you to do that it might be that you've shrunk as an organization because you're focusing in and then you're left with a smaller core now that might not fit uh, one of the larger companies so you then have some decisions to make as to what you do are you getting the best service because you might have right-sized the organization or you've taken a strategic focus in another area that means you don't quite fit that product and i think that's what we see we see people not fitting the product they bought into at that time so, in fact, I mean, what this seems to be creating is another CIO dilemma. We, we've always had the one about, you know, business as usual versus innovation. We now have another one when it comes to MSP saying, OK, do we stick with an incumbent or do we take a risk and upsize or downscale? And th there is always that element of risk, isn't there, in, in shifting supplier um, and how, how you make that decision. It's, it, it's a, a real challenge for people, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And I mean, it's definitely taking stock of what you need right now, taking stock of what the strategy is going to require as well, because that's definitely something, especially those rapidly growing, changing organisations. I mean, so, and, and obviously people can read about all this in massive more detail in the report itself, if they so will. Let's just wrap all this up. A couple of, a couple of questions just to finish with. So in terms of our IT leaders in these mid-market organisations, where do you feel they are right now? What kind of year do you think they've got in prospect? Look, I think there's some exciting opportunities. There's an awful lot of change happening in the industry. Um, the role's never been more important and more strategically important to organisations. We know that modern, sustainable businesses have got a massive digital agenda. So the opportunity for a CIO has never been bigger. At the same time, macroeconomic forces are creating a problem. Talent shortage, really difficult thinking about using third-party services to be able to go and fill that talent shortage is definitely something they're going to focus on. But that's going to be a real challenge of doing more with less. So actually, really getting people to know what they're talking about, really being very precise about the services that you want and balance that out. And somebody that's got the vision to help you spend wisely and then really make sure that you are doing more with less. So it's going to be an exciting but challenging year, I think we could probably say. And we'll definitely be exploring that, just how that, how challenging it's been. So one of the big challenges, rather than just to focus areas, we'll certainly cover that next year. I was, which leads me on to my, my final question, really. What, what do you think we're going to be talking about this time next year when we, when we come to do CIO Report 5? We are still going to be talking about cyber. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> still going to be talking about cyber. It's growing all the time and we know that it's getting more and more sophisticated so we're definitely still going to be talking about that of course we've mentioned it already we're going to be talking about ai generative ai we're talking about how it's impacting our businesses our business processes and our thinking i want to find out what people are doing with it you know at the event there was a show of hands there were people using it which was great there was quite a lot of people that were inquisitive as to how they could potentially use it and i think that's it i want to know how people are using it how practical it's been how their vendors have got on board, you know, an awful lot of people's strategies delivered from the platforms they use. So 
how are they interfacing you with it? Is that core functionality coming in the product or are they actually working outside of that? It was a really good response rate this year. So we are improving year on year. I'd like to see it. Uh, I'd like to see it do the same next year. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, we're looking forward to, for, to doing it. It's always a fascinating exercise. And I hope that this discussion we've had shows people the kind of depth and breadth of what we've what we found out and what, we, what we've been able to extract from, from the people we talk to. Lee, thank you so much for taking us through it. I've enjoyed your company as ever. And, uh, thanks everybody for listening. Appreciate it. Thanks again to Lee. And thanks again to everyone for listening and watching. I hope you found it useful. And um, we'll see you again soon.